Okay. Thank you. Uh, so I would like to talk about the spread of spread dynamics of COVID in Alberta. And this is short term projection. Uh, daily new cases are doubling, are, are growing exponentially. The doubling time is 14 days right now. And if we don't do, if you don't do anything, if we don't put any public health measures in place, we will reach 2,000 daily new cases around mid-September. And that's the level, 2,000 daily case, cases is the level when our ICUs were full in the third wave. The cases didn't decouple uh, from hospitalizations and ICUs in Alberta. The proportion is the same or even a little bit higher than it was in the, uh, in the third wave. Could I have next slide, please? So this slide shows, that's the graph that shows, it's a logarithmic graph. On the y-axis, we have um, multiples of two. So it's two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64. So anything that is makes straight line on the exponential, on logarithmic graph means it's exponential growth. Black is uh, daily cases, red hospitalizations, and blue are ICUs. And we can see that they all grow exponentially. They are not decoupled, uh, and the growth of actually the growth of hospitalizations and ICUs is faster than it was in the third wave. So now the doubling time is around twelve days. In the third wave, the doubling time of hospitalizations and ICUs was three weeks. So we definitely need to do something. Need to implement some public health measures to stop this growth. Next slide, please. So that's the graph borrowed from Robson Fletcher uh, from CBC. Uh, so I encourage everybody to follow him on Twitter at CBC Fletch. He has uh, really excellent uh, reporting on COVID, COVID numbers and COVID graphs every day. This graph shows um, hospitalization, like ICUs, uh, ICU occupancy and ICU um, threshold level. So the capacity, the typical capacity is like blue line here, blue dotted line, the uh, 170. Uh, can we go back? Thank you. Um, and in the third wave, in the middle, we can see that COVID cases took almost all the capacity. So what we have is the is kind of credit mode or debt mode, what is happening in the hospitals. Normally, sorry, I don't have a pointer here, but normally, COVID cases are the minority in ICUs. When we are in the wave, we have to do some, like people have to be moved, like patients are moved. The, the elective surgeries are postponed. So we will need to pay it in the future. So these people will need to be operated later in the future and create that will create a backlog. And we are reaching this level right now as well. Next slide, please. So one thing I wanted to really stress is that the growth in cases, grow in growth in hospitalizations, growth in ICUs that we see was predictable already in May. Like just that's my slide that I had that I made on my 24th. So knowing very little about Delta, but when we knew that Delta is 40% more transmissible than Alpha and that two times more trans transmissible than original variant, it was absolutely possible to predict the current wave, the current Delta wave, that eventually, if we don't take measure, if measures, if we don't stamp it out, it will resurface and grow exponentially very, very rapidly. And that's exactly what is happening right now. So this wave is absolutely predictable. But next slide, please. What was also predictable then, but didn't happen, was that in May we had really amazing decline like the r value was 0.66 so it was halving every five six days so if we would just continue what we've been doing and keeping vaccinated pe vaccinating people we could stop all community transmission by end of july and probably with vaccinate ongoing vaccination it probably could happen even faster so basically we would have normal at least internally in alberta we could have normalcy back and we wouldn't have the fourth wave, the fourth delta wave that we see now. So just gradual reopening would, would 
prevent what 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 we see now. Um, okay, but it didn't happen. So now I will talk what what we can do a little bit about uh, how much more transmissible delta is. So next slide, please. Uh, that's a picture from the article in the BBC uh, article, and it illustrates quite well the concept of R0. So R0 tells us how many people, on average, one infected person would infect when there is no public health measure and nobody is vaccinated. So for original variant that was here in the fir first wave, the R R0 was three. Now then it increased for alpha because we let we let the COVID spread so it could mutate, it could evolve to a faster one, and the selective pressure is to be faster. Uh, so alpha R value R0 was four to five, and delta R0 is five to eight, so around twice more transmissible than original variant. So what it makes what it means in practice is one thing is that now the herd immunity only by vaccination is basically impossible. Now to control it, we need both public health measures and vaccines. Next slide, please. So this is uh, par partially theoretical, par partially practical thing uh, model from for original variant that original strain that R zero was, which R zero was three. If we would have, if we would vaccinate seventy five percent of total population, that pink line, uh, and have 93% eff vaccine efficiency against transmission, then we could bring R0 from three, by not doing anything else, but just by vaccinating, we could bring R0 from three to just below one, to 0.9, and that it would that would start reducing the spread. What we observed in the first wave in many jurisdictions, including Alberta, that with combination of public health measures only without vaccines, with original strain, we were able to reduce R to 0 0 0.6, 0 0.7, which reduced growth very, very quickly. So reduced the spread very, very quickly. If a year ago we would have vaccines, then com combining both public health measures, so the blue line with the vaccines would result in a green line here. So very quick reduction in cases. Basically, pandemic could be over in two weeks then, but we didn't have vaccines back then. We let COVID spread, we let it mutate, we let it evolve, and we generate, it generated Delta variant. Next slide, please. And Delta variant has the trans R R0 around twice higher, so six. So our pink, the pink line that was just with vaccines only, for original variant could make the could get us to herd immunity and controlling the spread only with vaccines. Now it's impossible. Is if vaccines are 60% efficient against transmission. So to be clear, we don't know exactly what is the effect effectiveness of vaccines against transmission, but 60% is in, in a range. Uh, and we would have 64% total population vaccinated. Currently it's 59% in, in Alberta. Then we we will be able to bring down R0 from R from 6 to 3.7, so still very strong exponential growth. But again, it would be just if we would have zero public health measures, vaccines only. If we would vaccinate with zero public health measures, 85% of total population, so everybody, and if vaccine would be 60% efficient, then R would be to effective R would be 2.9. If we would use public health measures like in the first wave, with this more transmissible variant, still R would be quite high, it would be 1.2. So we would still have a growth. But if we combine both, we can, so both vaccines and public health measures, we can still control Delta. We could result, we could have as a result this green line. So bringing R0, R value below one and reducing the spread. And actually that's what's happening now in, in New Zealand, they had a Delta outbreak. They still have Delta outbreak and they managed to halt the exponential growth just within the last three days, having just 24% of total population vaccinated. So with strong public health measures and even with limited vaccinations, they were able to halt it. They didn't stop it yet. The, it doesn't go rapidly down yet, but it's halted. And, and I think that's a positive news for us because we have 
So they have 24% population fully vaccinated. We have in Alberta 59% of total population fully vaccinated. So we are in much better place if we add public health measures to it to control the Delta. And especially if we, if we become serious about mitigating, mitigating airborne transmission, we can really get it under control. So thank you very much.